Society is a vast conspiracy to make us a single self. And to escape this self, we must somehow become detached from all those habits and values and attitudes that society has encrusted us in. And one of the ways to do this is to force ourselves to be other than we would normally be. And this is one of the functions that the dice can perform. They make us take risks, step out of our normal roles, and in this way we begin to break the shell of ourself, begin to become detached so we can play with our various selves instead of thinking that one is the all-serious, all-important one, our true self. We have no true self. We have many actors inside of us, and these are the ones that must be permitted to play. And the dice are the random director. What are some of the things that you've rather wanted to do with your life, but haven't gotten around to doing yet? List two or three of them, at least, as one, two, and three, or if there are more, four. And then look at them carefully and say, now if you cast a die and the die chooses number one, do you think you'd be strong enough to go ahead and, and to try to do that thing? Now, if you don't think you could do it, then take it off the list. Just leave on the list things. You, you must commit yourself to following the die when it falls, so don't put something on the list that deep down inside you know you, you wouldn't do even if the die chooses it. But put down those things you sort of wanted to do and haven't gotten around to doing, and if the die chooses it, go and do it. Five or six, well, it didn't choose it. I don't have to do anything today. The dice allows you to open Pandora's box. Being a dice man is sort of almost, um, it's like being an alcoholic without the hangover. I think if anybody carried on indefinitely with the dice, they would probably end up in prison. I feel it's a bit like Russian roulette, only with, instead of having one live round and five empty chambers, it's like having one live round, that's the deadly thing, the thing you don't want to do. And five surprises, five treats, maybe. It is completely the lore of the forbidden. Your little parent over your shoulder saying, don't do it, you know, or the angel saying, no, don't do it, and the devil saying, yes, do it, do it, do it. My passion both as psychiatrist and as dice man, has been to change human personality. Mine, others, everyone's. To give to men a sense of freedom, exhilaration, joy. Dicing is very personal. You have to decide where you are in your life, where you'd like to break free. There may be no place that you need to break free. You may need the dice no more than you need to drop acid or uh, get, uh, get totally uh, blotto, or to be psychoanalyzed. Ask yourself what are some of the things you'd like to do that you haven't, uh, haven't done. yourself whether you could really do this if a die chose it from among six options and then uh, cast a die. Anything you haven't done with your life that you sort of wanted to but just haven't gotten around to? You know what? I. Uh... I try to live myself, live my life on a, on a daily level where, uh, where I don't have those regrets. 
Right now I'd like to dance in the street and I'm not. For me, I wanted to, always want to go to the Grand Canyon. Really? I haven't done it yet, haven't but I'm going to do it soon. Work a little less. Uh, Work a little less? Yeah. I'd like to live on Central Park South, on the 28th floor, facing Central Park. Going to the roller coaster. Swim with the dolphins. Going on a roller coaster. <laughs> Jumping out of an airplane with a parachute. Well needed vacation. Oh, no, that's something I'd like to do. Learn how to play the piano. Go out to space. Sail around the world. Singing. Give up my apartment, travel across country. Writing books. Well, I'll definitely be sitting somewhere else, not here today. We all get stuck in different places in different ways, so there's no, uh, you know, there's no generalization other than the word stuck and dissatisfied and restless. I got stuck here in New York City. I think that's about it, and I never got around to it. I think in most cases it's, it's a feeling of uh, being uh, trapped or dissatisfied or unfulfilled or un unhappy and not seeing any way out. The trouble is most people who are that way uh, will probably attribute it to their job or to their wife or their husband. Uh, rather than something, the limitations they've imposed on themselves by the way they conceive of themselves. One of my dreams is uh, a a society where anybody can be anybody, and where you can change roles, and that's expected of you, where you can be inconsistent, and that's expected of you. Here's a die. Here's a dice. You drop that on the sidewalk. But if it falls, or a one or a two, and it comes up a one or three or a five. One, two, or three. And if it comes up an odd number, if this dice falls a one or two or a three, you absolutely commit yourself, no matter what your wife or kids say. You'll commit yourself sometime in the next two months. You commit yourself. You change your life enough to fulfill that dream. You'll commit yourself to going to the Grand Canyon in the next two months. You are going to overcome your fear and go on that roller coaster. Would I do that hypothetically? No, I don't think I would. Take a game. Oh, um, no, I couldn't do that, though. I wouldn't want to do that. Actually, I don't think I want to do it. No, no, it's too frightening. I would just do it if I felt like doing it. You wouldn't do it by chance. No, not because I, the number came up. Should I roll the dice, see if that happens? Where am I going to roll it to? OK, there it goes. Just drop it straight down. Sure. <laughs> Two. Two. You don't have to go. Yeah, just straight down. Yeah, right. Put it That's good. All right. Five. Five. Well, now it's up to you. You're what five. does that mean? <laughs> what does it mean? What does four mean? So if it's a three, then I'll give up my apartment and travel cross country? <laughs> oh. Well, I guess that means I'm giving up my apartment. That's nice work here. Yeah. <laughs> I said, should let my landlord know. Good thing my lease is up now. <laughs> what do the dice offer people? A chance to expand, a chance to play roles, a chance to let accident into your life, a chance to let new experiences come into your life, a chance to be somebody else, do something else, go someplace else, work at something else, create something else. The Dice Life is an effort to, uh, to, uh, to let us express our multiplicity uh, when that's what society has made us, uh, made us very various and have many selves. And instead of feeling we have to behave in the same way all the time. Society works best when everybody's behaving in a nice predictable fashion. But in our incredibly complex uh, modern society, we're getting bombarded with uh, temptations to be all sorts of different people. Uh, every commercial 
is, an, is, a, is urging us to be a certain type of person to drive this kind of car, to wear this kind of makeup, to, to look this way. So that because we're getting this uh, uh, bombardment of multiple values, by definition we have a, an incredibly various uh, set of desires and personalities and tendencies within us. There are other ways you could be living, other ways you could be responding to a situation, other things you could be doing with your life. When you see that, I mean, you could then naturally choose to go in a new direction, or you could use the dice to, to list these various options and, uh, and let uh, chance intervene. If you list some quite specific options and have seriously determined that no matter what the die chooses, you'll do it, and it chooses a very specific option, I will I will tell off my best friend uh, all the grievances I've built up uh, against him for the next year and you and you do it uh, that's that's uh, that's taking it seriously and that's how it will have the the beneficial effect whereas if it says do this and you say oh no no that was a mistake and you don't do it then dicing is no different from making the decisions on the normal basis you have to commit yourself to following what the die chooses, otherwise you're, you're just being your normal self and therefore somewhat limited. So there's a leap of faith? No, there's a leap of will. It's will. You're saying, I'm not going to do it all my body and instincts and personality want to do, I'm going to do with this stupid option that whatever the die chooses. You make that will in the first place and that becomes stronger than your normal self. So you give up your judgment? Your judgment, right. Your instinct, your habit, your morality. You put those all on hold once you've listed the options and the die has chosen one. Long before I had a theory about why it might be an interesting idea or a good idea, for some reason, uh, even I don't even remember how I started doing it. I, I was making decisions by casting dice. Uh, and uh, the first character in my first uh, effort to write a, a novel when I was about 21, there was a Dr. Luke Reinhardt who was a minor character in, in that novel. And, uh, and uh, he uh, was a dice person and believed in dice therapy. Uh, you know, I never finished more than 60 pages of the novel and never probably wrote more than 10 about Luke. Uh, but 15 years later, when uh, I suddenly uh, got more involved in the idea, uh, he became my main character and uh, uh, he became the Dice Man. As soon as I began writing the Dice Man in the first person, as if I were Luke Reinhardt, uh, I enjoyed it tremendously. It was as if I had found my natural voice, and uh, it, it flowed out, and uh, it was a tremendous pleasure to write. 